I've seen a lot of videos online lately about the release of Ableton Live 12, or at least the announcement of the release of Ableton Live 12. It is still in beta at the time of recording this video. And many of the videos I've seen have kind of shotgunned through all the new features in Live 12, which is great. It's good to know the new stuff that's coming. I decided to do something a little bit different here with Sonic Academy. I decided to just pick a couple of the new features that really resonated with me that I think are really cool. We'll go a little deeper in this video on the scale awareness feature, which shows its face in many different aspects of live from MIDI effect and instrument devices down to the MIDI clips and some of the MIDI generation tools as well. That's another thing I wanted to cover in this video is some of the new tools for editing and creating new ideas within your MIDI clips. So we have whole new sections where we can transform existing MIDI clips or generate completely new ideas from scratch on a totally empty MIDI clip. So we'll cover a little bit of all of this in this video. So stick around and get excited about Ableton Live 12. One of my absolute favorite new features in Ableton Live 12 in the beta here is the scale awareness feature. And that's this function up here you can see up in the top of the screen. We can select a scale. Um, I happen to be writing in D sharp or E flat minor. And then this button here is gonna turn the scale awareness feature on or off. And if it's on, it works across a multitude of different devices, instruments, MIDI clips, um, the MIDI pattern generators and the MIDI transform options. So lots of different places uh, this is gonna kind of lock what you're doing to the key or to the scale that you're writing in, which is really, really awesome. And it can be toggled on and off independently on clips, for example. So when I have this function on, if I create a new MIDI clip, it's gonna have the scale function on or the scale mode on. And you can see it'll highlight the notes in the scale that I've selected. I can turn that off for just this clip and you can see it's still on on my other clips. Um, so that's kind of a nice feature uh, to be able to toggle that independently, but I'm going to leave it on across the whole, uh, across the whole set here. And we'll see how this works with other features as well, such as some of the MIDI effects. And they've updated some of these MIDI effects. I'm using the chord in the arpeggiator here. So let's, let's hear what I've got. I've got this drum and bass beat, and then I've got just this simple pluck sound that I made with collision. And I'm just playing a D sharp note every, uh, two bars here. So it's, you know, pretty boring. Oh, let me turn the arpeggiator off and we'll mess with that in a second. So it's just playing one note every two bars. Now let's go to the arpeggiator, which if you've used the arpeggiator in Ableton Live 11 or prior to that, it, this looks quite a bit different. It's mostly all the same functionality. They've just made it a little, a little bit more visually pleasing and a little bit easier to use, I think, because you can see what's going on. But anyway, you'll notice that the arpeggiator has this scale button, this scale mode button up here. And if I turn it on, it means that the distance setting here, which normally allows us to do this thing where we can add steps. So even if I'm playing a single note, I can tell it to take one step up 12 semitones. Like right now it's just basically playing my D sharp and it's on eighth notes, jumping back and forth between D sharp. What am I on? D sharp three, D sharp three, and then D sharp four. It's just jumping up an octave and kind of going back and forth. And I can adjust this distance in semitones but if we have the scale mode on, you'll notice that the dial now changes to, instead of ST for semitones, it says SD for scale degrees. And what that means is now the arpeggiator will jump to specific intervals within the scale. So for example, let's look at this MIDI clip. I'm gonna start on my D sharp or my E flat, and then it'll jump up to F, to G flat, to A flat. So it'll only stick with notes in the scale. It kind of bypasses the semitones. Uh, that aren't in the scale and just uses the notes that are in the scale. So you can do start. You can start to do really interesting things if we, for example, just set the distance to one scale de degree and then start to increase the steps. So we start to create melodic patterns within the scale. So take a listen to this. So basically, we're playing our root note here and then just moving up. We're starting at the root. Let me turn the arpeggiator off so I can just click through these. We're starting at the root and then going up one scale degree, one scale degree, one scale degree. Let's turn the arpeggiator back on. Pretty interesting. So we'll leave that on, but I'm actually gonna reset the steps to zero because now let's add in the chord MIDI effect. And again, the chord MIDI effect, if you've used this before, you can use these shift dials to add additional notes that'll stack on top of whatever note you're playing in your MIDI clip. And again, you can tune those by semitones but if we turn the scale mode on here, you can see that it tunes in scale degrees. And I've already set up a chord here. I've got like a minor nine chord going here. So plus two scale degrees gives me the, the minor third, 
plus four scale degrees gives me the perfect fifth. Now keep in mind, it's four plus one, you know, the one that I'm on. So you got to kind of keep that on, keep that on your mind when you're doing the math to dial in your scale degrees. Plus six is giving me the minor seven and plus eight is giving me the minor nine. So let's take a listen just to the chord on its own. Let me turn the arpeggiator off. Also, by the way, it's worth noting the chord MIDI effect, they've added this really cool strum feature. If I turn that value up and I just hold a note down, it plays through the notes in succession before it sustains them. And then if I go to a negative value, it goes backwards. It starts at the top note and kind of shifts them back down. So very, very cool new feature. I'm gonna leave it off for right now though. And we'll turn the arpeggiator on. Let's maybe change the arpeggiator style to down so that we're starting at a high note and, and ramping down. But let's take a listen to what we have now. So with those two MIDI effects and the scale mode on, we got a much more interesting pattern going on here. So we've got our note getting turned into this nice dense minor nine chord, and then that minor nine chord going into the arpeggiator, and right, arpeggiator's just kind of doing its thing, starting at the top note and, and making its way down. Now we could use the steps here. Um, this might sound a little weird, but let's see. Kind of interesting, it's getting me some nice random results. But anyway, we'll leave that off for now. Um, the other thing I wanted to look at is how uh, some changes have been made to how we can generate MIDI, which is really, really cool here. And some of this is gonna have to do with our scale awareness as well. So let's go, for example, uh, let me stop everything else. We're gonna stop all clips here and let me just make everything a little bit more, a little bit wider so we can see everything. Okay, so we're gonna go here to the, um, this sliced drums track. And let me solo that for a second. What I have here is, it's like an amen break that I sliced up and I just sliced it on, I think it was on quarter notes. So we got four slices here. And if we look at the, um, or we got eight slices, I should say, sorry, but two bars of, of quarter notes. So if I just play this through, it's just triggering each slice and I just get my straight up, my amen break, nothing special here, right? Now you'll notice when I'm looking at MIDI clips, um, First off, the tabs to toggle between your clip envelopes and then the MPE expression controls, they move them to the top here, which is kind of nice. And then on the left-hand side, we have our uh, MIDI kind of transpose and pitch functions here. These are things that we've seen before, but it's all laid out a little bit more nicely. Again, the visually pleasing is kind of the name of the game when it comes to a lot of the updates in Live 12 here. Um, but we got things like the ability to double time or half time our selection of MIDI notes. We can uh, invert a selection of MIDI notes, make them all legato, reverse them all, et cetera. A lot of this stuff is stuff that we saw in Live 11, um, but it's uh, laid out a little bit differently. But now we have these additional tabs for different MIDI transform and generation tools. So these are really cool. I wanted to share a couple of these. I'm not necessarily gonna go through every single one. When Live 12 officially releases, maybe we'll go a little deeper into each of them. But a few of my favorites here, especially when it comes to chopping up breaks like this, are the first one I wanted to look at is the, where is it now? Recombine. Uh, what this allows us to do is take a selection of MIDI notes and just recombine the order in which they play. So I'm gonna take the second bar. I'm gonna select these four notes right here. Let's let it play. And then we'll just start to Try these different recombine options and see how it's just changing the order of the notes. And when I have this transform button turned on, any changes I make in the editor here, it will basically make those changes in real time over here in the MIDI clip view editor. So this is a great way to just create little variations, especially for your slice breaks. I like that a lot. Um, just a really simple move there. And then we also have, if we go to this ornament transformer, this is cool because we can do things like add flaming hits or grace notes. I'm gonna take um, maybe my last, let's try these last two notes and we'll use some grace notes here. And I'm gonna take the position. And if I adjust that, you'll see how it adds additional notes. If I go to negative values, it adds notes before the original note start. If I increase to positive values, it'll add notes where the original note started. So that's cool for creating like sped up little fills and things like that. We can do things like adjust the velocity of the additional notes. Or there is actually a velocity transform tool as well. So what if we take these um, last three hits here and then let's change our transform tool to velocity shaper. Now this is a max for live device that's kind of built in here. 
And if I have those notes selected and then I just adjust the curve of my velocity shaper, you can see it's actually adjusting the velocity so they ramp down over time. Creates a cool little effect at the end there. Let's hear that maybe with the bass and with that pluck. I like that. So we have a newly chopped break beat just by using some of those different transform tools. And then let's go over here. I've got this pad sound. Um, and I'm just sustaining a D sharp or an E flat right now. Let's solo that for a second. It's a nice sound, but it's, you know, kind of boring as is. But if we click over here, we have these different MIDI generate tools. My personal favorite of which is Stacks, which will just build chords for you, which is really, really awesome. So if I select Stacks, um, you have this icon here. I'm not sure visually exactly what they're trying to do with this, but I can scroll through these and basically select different chords. Now, one thing you wanna be really careful of with this, and I, I tend to mess this up all the time, is you wanna make sure that you set the correct root note for your scale. So you can see I had, let me undo this a few times. I had, what note did I have drawn in there? I had a D sharp two drawn in, but the root was set to E sharp zero. So as soon as I started toggling through these different chords, it moved my root down to E sharp zero and which is actually F. I don't know why they're calling it E sharp. But anyway, um, just be aware of that. So let's undo this. Let me start back where I had it. I'm gonna set the root key first and foremost to D sharp two. And then if we start going through these different chords, we can just hear all these different voicings right away. This is kind of similar to Plugin Boutique Scaler plugin, if you've ever used that, where you can just like have chords generated and then audition them very quickly. Um, it's not quite the same as Scaler, but uh, the ability to just hear chords and audition them and kind of go off of the feel, I think is really, really cool. So let's take a listen. Here's just our basic triad. But yeah, yeah, I love this ability just to be able to audition and hear these different chords. Let's actually go to, I'm a sucker for minor nine chords, especially with this genre, I'm doing this kind of liquid drum and bass thing. Now we can uh, leave it as a single chord, or if I hit the plus button here, I can add additional chords to the sequence. So now you can see I got two little chord generators here. It's split the MIDI notes, so now I have a second chord and I can change that to a different chord if I want to, a different voicing. And we have the ability to change the, to different inversions. You can see that that'll uh, invert certain notes in the chord. It's kind of cool. I think I'm just gonna keep it simple though. We'll just keep that one minor nine chord. So I'm gonna take this and I actually wanna add because what did it give us? It gave us the root, the third, the fifth, and then the ninth. But I wanna add in the minor seven, which I think is C sharp and then we'll just stretch that out. And you know, now that I've generated the chord, I can go in and I can go you know, edit it like I would normally. Let's maybe take the uh, minor nine up here, the high E sharp three. What if I shift down arrow that so we have the second or the second scale degree playing. It just gives it this nice sort of dissonant effect. So let's hear that with everything now. Very cool. So we just spat out a quick chord, made a couple quick little tweaks to it using our standard editing. We use the MIDI effects to, with the scale awareness, to generate an interesting little pluck sound there. An interesting little melody for our pluck, I should say. And then we're using some of these MIDI transform tools to chop up our break and get a slightly different breakbeat pattern happening. Looks like it got rid of my, um, it got rid of my, uh, the, the stutter that I created there. But anyway, I'll go back and edit that later. But anyway. Uh, you get the idea here. So lots and lots of cool ways to generate new ideas or transform existing ideas. And again, going along with Ableton's ethos here of just getting ideas out of your head quickly and um, you know enhancing the workflow of your music production. So I'm really, really happy with a lot of these changes they made and these new additions to MIDI editing and uh, MIDI generation. So um, when Live 12 does launch, I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this. We'll probably do deeper dive videos on some of this stuff right here on Sonic Academy when uh, the official Live 12 does release. Until then, stick around and I will catch you guys all soon on a new Sonic Academy tutorial. Take care.